One of the things that really keeps me going, keeps me jazzed as an artist, is working with young people. It's kind of like a dance. You don't see it till it's printed, and that's a little unusual. All the work that you've done with them over their lifetimes is preparing them for being independent individuals. Hanam, South Korea is one of our sister cities for Little Rock. They invited us, the city, uh, last summer to put a piece on display in one of their sculpture gardens over there sometime in the next year. And so I submitted a proposal and won the competition. And my concept is called youth. And it's an abstraction of a female figure, obviously. It's a young woman up to the bust line uh, made out of vines and has a small bird on it. So I've got this one wild vine that really takes off and grows crazy in my yard. If I'm not careful, it just takes over which is an interesting metaphor for your, for your children. They just get wild and crazy and take over sometimes, which is great, it's part of what we hope for. But I want to show something that had to do with youth and growth. And the, the plant life seemed like a natural fit and to have a small bird in it, it's like the soul of the piece. Now, traditionally, you'll create a form in clay and then you make a wax reproduction. And then the wax pre reproduction, you'll put into a mold, plaster and sand mold, and then we melt out the wax and then we pour the bronze into that. The, the term is lost wax casting. It's been around for thousands of years. So we've kind of added a little different step. Instead of doing a clay and a mold, we actually do a computer generated image and do a 3D print. So it's a little bit a little bit of an interesting twist in a contemporary use of materials that does something that I couldn't do before. So once I discovered that we could do this on another project, I wanted to fold it into what I could do for my proposal for the Sister City Commission. But I start with a drawing and then we go to a basic 3D rendering and then he shows me like a, a little film animation so I can look at it in the round. If I like that, fine. If not, we'll just keep going until I'm happy with it. And then when I'm happy with it, then he'll, they will take the 3D image from one view and then drop it into a backdrop so you can see it where it might be. I wanted to see what this would look like printed in a small scale and see if I liked it. I'm doing a small scale piece. If it comes across well in a small scale, you have a better chance that it's gonna visually work well in a larger scale. When I saw the 3D, this, the model 3D print of this, um, uh, I was just, oh, okay, we have to do this. You can see all the leaves and the vines, but it's what they call a rough 3D print. and then it's dipped in wax carefully. It puts a thin 16th of an inch thick wax on it. And then I'll model the surface, like put the texture for the vines, and I'll put a little bit of veins in the, in the leaves to give it a little more life to it. The new technology allows me to create this really thin ethereal form in plastic and wax and be able to cast it in bronze. Eventually, we'll take this whole piece, we'll invest it in a plaster and sand mold, uh, that'll weigh about 150 pounds. We'll take that mold and we'll put that into a kiln and melt out all this wax. Since the delegation is going to be here this February 8th, I thought it'd be great since we're right on schedule with trying to cast that piece, why not cast the work that we're going to be taking over there sometime this May or June in February while they're here. The kiln will shut off probably a couple hours before we get ready to cast. We'll let it cool down about 500 degrees and we'll take, carefully take the molds out. We take that mold and we invert it like this. And then now we've got that mold with a cavity in the shape of all this. We pour the metal into here and then it goes down these little, they call them gates, and it goes in and fills in all these cavities. And then as it fills up, the air pushes out and it comes up this little riser here, or this riser here, and it pushes all the air out. And when we see metal come up that little riser, or this one here, we know the mold's full. We'll 
melt bronze up to 2100 degrees, and we'll pour the bronze into the molds once we get it all melted. We call it the dance um, because there's three of us. We have to work in concert as a team to turn the furnace off, open the lid, pull out the crucible that's 2100 degrees, set it down carefully, pick it up carefully, and pour it carefully. And so we use a crane to help do all the lifting, and then we work together. And you have to be very coordinated um, with your teamwork and understand exactly what your team member is doing a lot by body language and then just very short commands because you have to yell above all of the, the hot sounds that are happening in the uh, foundry. It, it's it's kind of like a dance. You got to know what's going on and what you're doing. And Marianne has cast bronze before, I've cast bronze before, and obviously Michael has cast bronze before. So we have the basic knowledge of where to be, what to do, how to do it. And then Michael or whoever is pouring your castings at that time takes over and they would be considered the foreman, the driver, I guess, so to speak. We let that cool probably overnight, and then we'll break open the molds, and then we'll, we'll throw away the sand and the plaster, and then you'll see, the, you'll see now not a wax, it'll be a bronze. carefully chip off the plaster and sand. And then eventually, within probably about 20 minutes, you'll see the form. It's like Christmas to us. It's like, like oh, like I'm five and I'm gonna get my cool present and it's gonna be great. That's what it's like every time we open one of those up. And um, they're still just piping hot. The steam's coming off of them as we're trying to rinse them off. And now um, we're gonna go ahead and get all this sand out because these are gonna be Hollow. Get into the inside of there. This will be beautiful and hollow. This will get it all cleaned out. See it cast really well is a real affirmation of our technical skills and our care that we've put into it all through the process. And it will cut, up, cut off all the excess metal we don't need. So we cut all this off and we recycle it. This is a, a, an unfinished surface. We'll have to uh, die grind or take a grinder and cut off and grind down all this here. And then after we clean that all up with the, the die grinder, we'll come back and sandblast it. What the foot pedal does is that opens the air, so it's 100% air flowing into this gun and, it, and the gun creates a vacuum and throws the sand-like material onto the piece and cleans it. Since we're doing the whole figure in bronze, um, we're doing it in sections. We're doing like the waistline, the hips, the thighs, and the legs separately. Uh, it's always great to kind of get it to this point where it starts to come alive. Uh, in terms of you see the pieces are fitting together, 
Um, and the movement's there, and the surface is great. All the, the, the leaf surface is part of what I'm very happy about, and the texture of the vines, and all that will match up, and you won't, uh, it'll, just, it'll look great, even better as an end result. Um, here's our birds. Right now it looks a little bit rough, but you can still see all the leaves and the vines within the foot very well. Same with the birds. Originally I thought about doing a mockingbird, but they're a little bigger and I felt that the size was too much. I like the sparrow idea because this is supposed to be a young person, so the symbolism behind the sparrow seemed to be better, seemed to work for this concept. But I like the idea of that it's not complete. It's about a young person. They're not complete. They're still growing, they're still developing intellectually, physically, spiritually. And that's a, that's a part of the idea. We're at the, probably another really exciting part of the piece. Seeing it come together first as a form in 3D print, pouring it in bronze, and then assembling that bronze where it starts to come to life in a three-dimensional form. This, it's exciting. It's like you can see the finish line. You're getting closer. And uh, in this particular stage of the sculpture, we've got all the parts cast. Now we're matching them up. In the process of taking the 3D printed plastic and putting it in wax, the, it heated it up just a little bit and they warped. So what I've done is I've tacked the upper, the, the kind of abdomen element to the calves where the, you can see the vines kind of matching and some of the leaves kind of matching. Um, so in, in elements like in here, I've actually had to pry and, and bend the bronze and then in other cases have to hammer the bronze to get it to match up so that the, the, you know, the levels are the same. And so then the next challenge will be to weld that seam grind that off, then I'll sand it off, and then I'll put the lines back in the leaves so that you won't even know where that seam was as an end result. That's where the little bird sits. This is where we welded the parts together in here and in here from the inside. You can't hardly tell it where they're joined together. The idea was to make it more fluid so that you can't see where the parts were. Part of the reason we sandblast, I sandblast the pieces to kind of like final cleaning before I put um, any patina on it. Like in the surfaces here, like in the back of this, some of these little leaves, um, there's, it's a shiny surface where I've actually sanded, but I want it to be a more uniform, really subtle texture to it. And, and it'll clean it all. So you can tell a little bit of difference between where I've sanded it and where it's just the raw. So I'll do a final cleaning with the sandblast. And then I'll rinse it, and then I'll go ahead and spray a, a black patina on it. I'm gonna heat up the whole piece. It's about 400 degrees. I'll let that sit for a solid day um, to let that black patina cure, and then I'll rinse it again, and that will stop the patina from aging. A lot of the drudgery of the piece has actually been the casting and the finishing, and get, but getting up to this point, it's like the finale. It's like the spices on the, on the food that bring out the flavors in what you're cooking with, and it makes it the best. So the coloration, the finishing on this with the patinas is the most important part at the finish to make it look like what you want or to find a, a look that you're happy with that, that look, still looks good. This is one of my extra pieces that I cast in bronze and it's the same foot as what's on the, the sculpture. This is a patina, it's called apple green and I'm just gonna brush on some of the greens to see how it looks. So this won't turn instantly green. I'll have to lay on colors and it'll, it'll, turn, it'll turn green over a couple of days. It really won't do much right now. Since this is my test piece, I'm gonna try different things and I'm gonna sit down and make notes with what I'm gonna do with this color. I'm gonna put it on one side, then I'm gonna put the other color on the, front, on the other side. And then I'm gonna take a third color, which is a, an, actually an oxide, and put it on the back side. So whichever one turns out and looks the best, 
that's the one I'll use. Let's go ahead and put the screws in, dude. My little friend, keep an eye on everything. It's like last summer. This is the first time we've completely put the whole piece together. So, as Patrick said, it's my baby. <laughs> It feels like it's from Arkansas. One of the ideas is just to celebrate nature, but also to celebrate youth more than that. The casting itself was a, an adventure because of the size. Uh, see it, seeing it come to the, the full ending and everything, it's really kind of uh, nice to know that you've been part of this project and, and that it's actually going somewhere where the public's gonna see it in another part of the world, you know, in Korea. She's standing tall and strong and proud um, in her posture, um, but that the bird is kind of there to kind of remind us that even the simplest things a bird will make a home in and protect uh, and, and feel comfortable in. It'll hold up for probably 30 years before any kind of basic maintenance needs to be done to it. And the best part is that it'll be another place for someone else to enjoy. Cutting the screws, cleaning the bronze, grinding the bronze, welding the bronze. It's got to be a labor of love. The actual amount of time, effort, and work that go into a piece, any bronze piece, people see the finished piece. They don't see all of the thought process. They don't see all of the work. They don't see you know, the molds, the casting, the pouring, and all of that. They see a simple piece. Well, this is a simple piece, but people don't understand, as Michael said, what 10 months of work that went into this just to have this finished piece. You know, it's just, it's a long involved process. I have two children in college. My wife and I are empty nesters now. It's interesting preparing yourself for that and you can never really prepare for it. But at the same time you realize that all the work that you've done with them over their lifetimes is preparing them for being independent individuals. Creating a piece of public art is similar in that you're never sure what's going to happen when it gets out there in the public on its own. You're always hopeful that it's going to receive a positive welcoming, but you don't, you never know, you never know, something's going to be tagged the month after you put it up or somebody's going to try to destroy it or times will change and people will perceive it differently or people will misunderstand it, but you're always hopeful and bringing it to the public's eye, for them to interpret, to study, to consider, to contemplate what it means and why it exists. In this case, the, the gesture behind creating this piece is all about the nature of youth and what they represent to us and how we can encourage them and help them become stronger, better people to continue the whole idea of a better place. So the idea of letting go, packing up and shipping it is sort of like sending somebody to college. <laughs> it's an interesting experience in and of itself. To be able to have an opportunity like this to create a piece that goes to another culture, another environment, another people. How do you create that piece? What's the subject behind it? How do you connect to those people? What are the core values between us and them? Are we separate? Are we the same? Are we different? The bigger challenge to do internationally public art is to do something that connects with the people there as well as the people here. I felt it was really important to fo focus on something that was important to both of us, which was youth. To create culture within your community in your time says something about who we are as a, as a society. 
and for us to, to find our best and brightest and most talented and bring them out into the public it says something about who we are as a city and as a state in the country. Thank you.